Welcome to Make More Marbles. My name is Brad Hart, and we're here to interview the game changers, the future makers, the co-collaborators and creators who are here to collaborate with one another towards a better future for all of us. Enjoy the show. We've got a great guest coming up for you right now. Welcome to Make More Marbles. My name is Brad Hart, and today I am with a very dear friend of mine, Jessica Geist. I was introduced to this woman as a result of interviewing her husband. Brian, and she changed my damn life. So I'm really excited to have her on the show and talk about the magical work that she does in helping people regress to a time in their life that they may have long since forgotten, but is still holding them back from whatever it is that they're there to achieve. Uh, maybe it'd be a trauma or a story or some sort of thing that they might not even be aware of, but it's what you don't know that you don't know that can really get you because you have no framework to understand that, oh my God, I don't know what I don't know. Um, and the things that we don't know that we don't know could fill up the entire universe. And in fact, they do. So Jessica, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Brad. It's so beautiful to be here. And I'm so happy to be talking with you about what we don't know. Yeah. So we've done a few little fun things along the way where I wrote the end of these conversations. I think you're getting smarter about it because <laughs> you asked me before the show. It's like, Brad, what are we doing today? Oh, no, but really, what are we doing today? But what's the format? But, but how can I add the most value to your audience? And I appreciate that. Because and I, I actually really made sure that I put on makeup and did my hair this time. I was like, I asked you before, are we going to be on video or is it just audio? <laughs> it is always video. Pretty soon it'll be VR. And then <laughs> oh, be, love that. Yeah, maybe it'll be like on some other planet. We'll just do yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. Like, hey, Intergalactic podcast. Hey, now, we're on, now we're on Saturn. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah, the last time we got together, we talked about uh, some of the things that I was working through. And I, I'm a pretty open book. I, I don't really, I could probably be better at like keeping some of the skeletons in the closet. But for the most part, I jump on to Facebook and I tell the whole world, hey, this is how Brad screwed up. And last time I just, you know, Jessica's at a coffee shop on her phone, literally, and we were having a conversation on like, hey, we're going to have coffee talk. And we got on, we had a really fun time. So I recommend checking that out. If you're on my Facebook, go back and scroll um, to, to the one with Jessica and I, and I'll, I'll pop a link in the notes as well. But I just thought it was a really fun thing because she was like, all right, let's roll with it. You're just going to talk about all your deepest, darkest stuff. Okay, let's do this. So uh, I'm grateful that you're willing to play along with my crazy. And it's so rare that you find somebody who's not just, oh my God, how am I going to look? And is willing to just give up themselves in the way that you do. So I just want to acknowledge you that, Jessica. And thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you for that reflection. That's beautiful. And likewise, brother. Um, so Jessica, let's get people grounded. Because I... I love you and I appreciate you, but not everybody knows who you are. And I think it really is important to tell your kind of heroine's journey, if you will. Um, you know, some of the things that have worked out for you in the past and also some of the things that just haven't, right? The failures along the way and what they've taught you. Because I think everybody can relate to failure in some way, right? Everybody's had a failure. Yeah. Not everybody can relate to success. So could you kind of get people caught up to speed? Yeah, sure. So um, for those of you who are new to to me and... Um, so nice to meet, so nice to meet all of you. And my name is Jess Geist and I am a rapid transformational coach. So I am a transformationalist is what I like to call myself. I've been dedicated to the art, science, craft of mastery of transformation pretty much my whole life since I was a kid. And um, now I have my own company and it's under my own moniker, Jessica Geist. And what I do is I help entrepreneurs own their worth and earn their wealth. So my journey, let's see. Oh, it's a long, sordid tale. I but can't wait. <laughs> I'll start with I mean, I've had a lot of failure in my life, but I think what I'll focus on here are, is really my entrepreneurial journey because I, you know, I don't want to write a novel. But I decided to create my own company about, let's see, I think I went out on my own about four years ago. And when I did, it was kind of on a wing and a prayer. I had been working with a coach because I wasn't happy in my work and my life. And I was like, I don't know what I want to do next. And she encouraged me to step into my love of coaching. And I had this story that I wouldn't be able to do that until I was like 50 or 60. Because at the time, I was a consultant working with Fortune 100 companies doing you know, change management, learning development work. I'd also had a background in sales and marketing you know, at agencies, selling advertising. And I was like, where does all this go? Like, where is this all this leading me? I just completed my master's degree and um, 
basically an organizational and individual transformation. And I was like, I don't know where I'm, where I'm supposed to be now. And she helped me step into my desire to be a coach. And it just so happened that I got put on the bench at my consulting firm at the same time I was waiting to get staffed on another project. And I was like, oh my God, this is my moment. This is my opportunity to jump. And I did with nothing underneath me, literally. I mean, I had money and savings, but I had no plan, no business concept, nothing. I just come up against this idea of becoming a coach. One of my clients followed me. I ended up getting a bunch of coaching clients at the same time. So my first year in business was kind of a cakewalk, honestly. Like I walked into a, you know, almost $200,000 coaching and consulting business. I was working 15 hours a week, traveling, totally like living it up. I was in Manhattan at the time, hating it. And I'd been really depressed for a bunch of, a bunch of years leading up to that. So I felt like I was finding something. And then the following Christmas came around and I was at home with my dad. You know, your parents have this way of triggering all the best things in you. So I'm like hanging out with my dad at Christmas, like not doing it. I've been like two weeks, just chilling, straight chilling. And he, we were in the cat on the couch and he looked at me and he was like, he still doesn't understand completely what I do even to this day. He tries real hard though. And he looked at me and he said, Jess, uh, so, uh, I'm kind of confused by something and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, shouldn't you be like strategizing for next year or like figuring out what your plan is for next year? Like, what are you doing? And all of a sudden it was this moment of total contraction. And I was like, Oh my God, I have no plan. I don't know what my business is. I have no direction. And I feel like I'm doing all of this wrong. So it sent me into a complete tailspin. And that tailspin ultimately lasted a couple of years and led me to where I am today, which was a good place. But it put me down this path of trying to figure out, well, what exactly do I want to build? And what kind of coach am I? And who do I want to serve? And what is my vision? What am I doing? It led to multiple iterations of a business. I think I created like three different versions of a company before I got to where I am. All of them failed. Uh, the first, well, more or less failed. The first, I was a career coach and I did that and I got a bunch of clients, but I felt that the work was super prescriptive and I got bored. So I decided to sabotage myself and that stop getting clients. And then I decided to create something called Startup Talent, which was a boutique consulting firm for startups to help make CEOs better leaders and to teach them how to build organizational cultures that are people focused. Nobody wanted to buy that because startup founders typically just need investment money. <laughs> so I was ahead of the curve there. That didn't work. Literally got zero clients after months of work. Then uh, I decided to create a company with my husband and that's where I began to get traction. And it was an accident because I was building all these Squarespace websites for my failed businesses and projects. And I became by default a, spare, a Squarespace expert. So we were starting to run out of money because of all of this. My husband wasn't really clear on his purpose and I was the breadwinner at the time. And I was like, well, what if we just try to make a quick buck selling these Squarespace websites? So I put out a few messages. And next thing I know, we've got 10 clients and this list of people pounding at our door to get Squarespace websites built. And all of them were coaches. All of them were coaches, healers, because that's my people, you know, like that's my tribe. So we started supporting these coaches and I realized really quickly and my husband realized like, oh my God, they need so much more than just a website. They need all of the other experience that we have. They need consulting, they need marketing, they need sales, they need messaging and strategy, and they need coaching because they had these deep inner blocks that were keeping them from even launching the websites that we we're building. That led to the Coach Academy and we started gaining traction in that business. Still weren't really making tons of money. We're serving clients privately, starting to grow. And then I decided to make life really hard for myself and become super terrified of rejection. And we had all this, we had all of this mass like momentum and we had all of these people literally standing in front of us waiting and asking for us to give them something, right? I don't know if anybody else there out there has had this experience of walking up to the precipice of possibility. And then right when you get to that edge, feeling like there is no way I can jump. 
there is no way that I am worthy and deserving of receiving what these people want to give me and stepping into what I'm being called to step into. And so for me, that manifested in a, like a fear of selling. I was so afraid. I built this program teaching other people how to sell, which was the greatest irony in it. And I was terrified to launch it. I was terrified. And the people that I did reach out to, my, my desperation was like palpable. And my fear and the energy that I was coming into those conversations was so just unclean. And so the result was that over all of this time, we just watched the money in our business go down, 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 down. Meanwhile, living now in Los Angeles, which is not a cheap place to live. And then we got to the point where we had less than a thousand dollars in our bank account. And I did a vision quest medicine journey in Joshua tree in the desert. And I had a breakthrough there. And that breakthrough was that the only way for me to go to get out was to go in to myself, to really explore deeply the root underneath why I got into this place. Why had I allowed myself to sabotage my success? And where is the depth of this? Because I knew in that moment that if I didn't understand and clear what that was, that I would never be able to get out of it. So I went down this path of doing this deep inner work and I decided to dedicate myself to two things, coaching mastery and sales mastery. That was it. I was like, if I'm not building my skills and my capacity as a coach, which really ultimately means doing the deep work on myself and bringing those practices back to my clients and my work. And if I'm not focused on becoming a masterful saleswoman and re re-engaging that part of me and reframing my beliefs about sales, I will never be able to build my business. So I fully immersed myself in those two things. And within like a month, we had generated six figures and I was feeling like, woo -hoo! You know, I was like on top of the world. I was like, I showed myself, I got my together, I'm doing it, you know, and I really proved something to myself and it felt great. And then, and then I allowed the anxiety and the fear to come back because I created a new story because that's how success works, right? When you like touch one level of success, then it opens up like another level of fear. And now the new fear was, you can't sustain this. That's what the demon voice in my head was like, you can't, that was a, you got lucky. This is not who you are. You just got lucky. And that story started to take me down. And then we left for Europe. And this was back in April, this, this year. And as we were leaving for Europe, we had some pretty good money in the bank, but not as much as we should have. And I wasn't building out any systems in my business. And I had so much anxiety. Long story short, we ended up going broke in Europe. Broke, broke, negative $700 in the bank account. Broke, maxed out credit cards, broke. I had a full blown, full blown panic attack on the street of Salamanca. Full blown, full body, full blown panic attack. And I, I was standing there, you know, trying to breathe, just trying to, get air into my lungs. I don't know if anybody listening has ever had a panic attack, but it's intense. You feel like you're going to die. I've only had twice. One twi I've only had it twice. That was the second time. And um, I knew that the, that the opportunity for me in that moment, like that was the thing that I was manifesting all along. Like for the years of me, feeling depressed, trying to figure out my career for the first time that I almost went to the bottom financially and got myself out of it. I knew that there was some depth, some darkness that needed to be touched in order for me to claim who I was and to step into my greatness. And I believe that I manifested that moment in Salamanca. And in that moment, I decided to go to the depths of my shame. And I just allowed myself to sit into all that, all of my self-loathing, all of the shame about who I thought I was and wasn't, all the guilt, all the pain, sadness, anger, 
And I just allowed it to come over me in waves and waves and waves and waves. And I knew that that was a character defining moment. Some part of me, this actually this voice of another coach is incredible. His name is Derek Rydell, a fr dear friend of mine. He always talks about character defining moments. And I knew his voice was there in the back of my head. He was like, this is that moment. The way that you choose to be now in this moment and what you choose to do next is all about defining and designing the person that you are. I'm a big Tony Robbins person, so I'm all about <laughs> designing yourself to be the person that you want to be. Yeah, Brad's doing happy dances. I, so yeah, I, I mean, it's all about that. And so for me, I knew I was like, this is my opportunity to design my life and to step into my greatness and to define my character. And that's when I rededicated myself to my worthiness because I knew that if I didn't believe that I was worthy, I would never do it. And I just finished my training while I was in London um, to become a rapid transformational therapist. And I just gotten the skill and the ability to literally rewire and reprogram my subconscious mind. And so armed with this new technology, I call it, I, I went to work on myself in a different way. Um, processing all of that stuff, integrating. We had to come back to the States. Uh, we had all of our stuff packed up in storage. We had no place to go. We had beautiful family that took us in, helped us re reboot and realign. And um, I re started to doing re this reprogramming work on myself. And my husband started doing this deep work and he's been doing a bunch of it too. And everything is completely shifted on for us. Like from, from that time to now, we are earning more money than we've ever made in our career consistently. <laughs> I'm launching my, my platform, which is worth to wealth. And I've been building a community. I've been stepping into opportunity and, um, I'm more dedicated than ever to this truth that I believe is this thing that, you know, strategies and tactics for building a business and for creating success are wonderful. But if you don't have your inner game on point, if you are not right with yourself, <laughs> you'll never be able to step into that, the, the beauty that those strategies and tactics hold for you. You can't achieve greatness unless you believe you're worthy of it. So that's been my journey. <laughs> That's a beautiful journey, Jessica, and I want to honor you for sharing it so succinctly and so powerfully for people who are listening to Glean, because I think everybody struggles with these things, um, whether it's front and center, like it is for you, and you've, you've been through it, uh, or it's kind of screwing them up in the background like it was for me in a lot of ways, you know, just, and worthiness shows up in a lot of different areas. It's not always about money, you know, yeah. it's have everything to do with what you allowed it yourself to receive. It could be love. It could be health. It could be uh, relationships. It could be just people who want to help you and you're just not able to accept. Yeah. And all yeah. of those things, you know, it's just as if you were to take a breath and not breathe it out or breathe all the way out and not breathe back in. Like you need to keep the cycle going. The energy needs to keep flowing. That's a part of life in all respects. And when you're out of balance, it, it can cause a lot of problems. Yeah, I so, agree. Yeah. I, I really resonate with your message and the work that we've done together has been very helpful. And I hire a lot of coaches. I do a lot of mastermind groups. I go to a lot of events. Um, but this was like, you know, you just know that there's a serendipity and a divine hand when people are put in your life and all you have to do is really just step into it. And at the time when I hired you, I was just so stressed out because we're building this business and you know, the, the, the bills, I don't care who you are, like, how successful you've been in the past. I've had monetary success. When you start racking and stacking G packs on top of each other of like, uh, you know, I got to hire this person and this system and that, and the other thing, and it's just not coming back to you yet. And you know, it will. And you know, like this weekend we made 50 grand, Woohoo! you know, right. So it always comes back. Uh, if you stay the course, but while you're doing it, I don't care who you are. It's scary. You know, whatever yeah. level you're playing at. And uh, the more I talk to successful entrepreneurs, the more I realize that you never stop being fearful. You just get better at dealing with the fear. You yeah. get better at recognizing for what it really is and working through your stories and being like, okay, because the only thing that matters at the end of the day is action. And can you get yourself to take action? That's self-leadership. So I guess my question for you is, what are some of the habits that you've put into place and some of the parameters and support that you've gotten um, that allow you to now 
cre- consistently create the income that you've created and what would you recommend for anybody who's struggling with something similar to do first and foremost is it does it have to get as bad as what you did to to really hit bottom and grind it out and like you know stub the last cigarette into the dust before you're willing to change or can it be a little less gnarly for somebody out there i think it's i think that medicine is different for everyone i think some people need to go all the way i think some people don't um i think it depends on what you need to heal and the depths of that healing you'll call what in you need you call you'll call in what you need and uh the real opportunity is not to be in the judgment of it when you do and to see it as an opportunity. But um, so there's so many different ways that someone can go about creating a transformation when they're in a place and a space that they know isn't serving them and when they desire to be someplace else. And for me, um, the first step is choosing to recognize that I need support choosing to be truthful and honest about what I'm experiencing and my need to receive, since we were talking about receiving guidance and support. I, I was hiding. I hid all of that, all of that, you know, because most entrepreneurs that I, I work with and a lot of the entrepreneurs that I work with privately are people like you who are incredibly successful. And there is this fear of being seen as anything less than that. And this fear of being judged or rejected. Or... So I had that going on too. And, and it's one of the reasons why I value you so much, Brad, because you're, you are so vulnerable and you're so real. And I, and I, I really have chosen since that time to lead with that vulnerable edge now because I believe that pretending that we've all got it figured out and that we're perfect and we know exactly what we're doing and that we're fearless and all of these things is a detriment. Mm. And um, so I would say that the first thing is being open, honest, and choosing to be vulnerable about where you are with the people that that can help you. So that's the first step. That's what I did. Um, and I actually came out on Facebook live. I told my story about being broke and I told my story about, you know, falling to the safety net of my family on Facebook live. And it was huge. It was a huge deal, but I knew that I needed to stop hiding in order to claim what I, what I needed. So that's the first step to be vulnerable and to ask to receive support. Um, the second step for me was to get to the real reason behind why like I needed to know and uncover the subconscious behavior that was overriding my conscious desires because some part of me didn't want me to have what I envisioned didn't believe that I was capable of having it, didn't believe that it was available to me. And there was fear that was driving me and I didn't understand what that was. So I needed to get to the bottom of it. And that's why I started doing the hypnosis on myself, putting myself through my own programs to reprogram myself. And I began with the belief that I am not enough because that's the root cause of everything ultimately all of our pain, all of our fear comes down to the belief that we are not worthy and that we are not enough. So I knew that if I wanted to get where I wanted to go, I needed to believe, not even just believe, like I needed to know. I, I hear clients talk all the time. I, I want to be confident. Like I want to, I want to be confident. Well, I think that confidence is really just a byproduct of knowing that you're worthy. And so what you really want is not to be confident. You want to feel worthy. You want to feel enough because when you can come from that place, that means that you show up as totally confident. And that's what I wanted. So I went to work on that myself and upgrading my worthiness. I have a coach that I pay a lot of money for and he's worth every penny. So I really leaned into my edge with my coach and I, I went to him and I asked him to 
hold me to that higher standard. And I chose to lean into the edge, not of business, business ta tactics and strategies as much as my spirituality and my inner world. So I doubled down on that. And I chose to take one action every single day that made me uncomfortable. So you talked about action. Every single day I chose to do one thing that made me uncomfortable and I chose to focus on one thing in my business and that was back to the same thing as before, sales. Sales, 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 sales. If you want to get out of where you are, whatever problem you got in your business, my opinion is you just, just go sell. Like if you're running into debt, if you can't pay off your bills, like if you can't pay it, just go sell. Go sell something. <laughs> and sales you will. Cure. Yeah. What'd you say? Sales cures all. That's sales cures all, man. Like, so I just doubled down on RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy, and I doubled down on the new experience that I was creating, which is rapid transformational coaching, which is the combination of subconscious reprogramming, conscious programming and depth work. And I just started offering it to everyone and anyone. And um, from there, it was just kind of like a, the floodgates opened. So yeah, I mean, action, um, self-love, worthiness and vulnerability were the keys to me getting through where I was. And there's a million other things that you can do. I mean, there's so, I mean, there's a limitless amount of opportunities and possible ways that practices that you can implement to get you where you were going want to be. But that's what worked for me in that situation. Yeah. We, as humans, we have this extraordinary ability to create and we can create greatness. We can create hell as well. You know, yeah. It all comes down to our stories and our meanings and the and the things that we pattern recognize in our lives that we get attached to, and they either serve us and empower us or they destroy us over time. And the simple, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking of all of this is that you had some disempowering stories around worth, around being enough, around sales, around all of these things that once changed magically, reality started to line up in a different way. <laughs> totally. Yeah. My, my real world desires and my subconscious desires matched. I don't know if anybody listening or if you're a Brad, like an Abraham Hicks fan. Mm. Um, but you know, they talk about being a vibrational match to your desire and that sometimes we have a desire, but we're not a vibrational match to it. And that's part of the law of attraction. If anybody out there listening is familiar with that it basically means that what you think you become and you create. And so if you were to boil it down, so I realized that I wasn't a vibrational match to my desires. So the worthiness work is what allowed me to raise my vibrational frequency and to step into, and to start attracting that, um, to be in that alignment with my desire. I like yeah. I look at it after thinking a lot about this. I have a saying that the law of attraction doesn't mean Jack, if you don't have the law of to get up here and take action, um, because it's really important. Like once you tee up the thing, you start attracting a thing, you have to be able to recognize it and take action on it. Yes. Cause God or the universe or whatever is going to show up and be like, Oh, this is, is this what you're looking for? You're like, Oh yes, yes, that please. And through gratitude, we get to give feedback to the universe too. Yes. So by, by envisioning what we want and then taking action when it shows up and then being grateful for the action and the opportunity and all the serendipities that happens through no huge intelligence of our own people look at what i do or what you do or what anybody does they say how did you do that so quickly well i'm a manifesting generator that helps but uh you know having the forethought to realize that it's a mental game and to realize yeah. that the, the universe and uh, you know these aren't my thoughts they're the thoughts of very smart people like nikola tesla if you want to understand the secrets of the universe think in terms of vibration resonance harmony frequency you know, these forces, which we barely understand, but that shape the entire fabric of everything that we consider reality. And it's not yeah. just a bunch of woo. And it's not just a bunch of stuff that you need to do either. It's this blend of we are conscious co-creators, part of this energetic field that we occupy and also interact with. And then as such, what we value becomes what we believe, becomes what we think, what becomes what we say, becomes what we do, becomes the habits 
consistently wiring and firing that create the reality. If we don't like our reality, we got to step back and say, all right, well, what were we valuing back here that led to all these other chain reactions? Yeah. 100%. So beautifully said. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. And that's been my experience and what I've witnessed in the transformations of my clients. It's, you know, that's why I created the program that I have now worth to wealth because, and there's a reason why worth is first and wealth is second. Um, because if you're, if you're not in that alignment, that vibrational alignment with yourself, if you're not also, by the way, really clued into what you actually want. And that is a big thing that I see people say like, oh, well, I want to be happy. We speak in these vague generalities and we're not specific in our requests to, the, to ourselves, to the universe. So we can't see the opportunities with the same clarity because we haven't really delineated the line of desire. We haven't truly drawn that line of desire. It's like a, it's like a whisper of a line instead of a hard line in the sand that leads you to the ultimate, the ultimate place. And so when your when your desire is like a, a blurry picture on a television, um, it's really, ha it's really hard. Uh, it's really hard to, to watch it unfold, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jessica, you've undergone a radical transformation. And, and the funny, the other funny thing is like people tend to generalize like, Oh, you know, she went broke. Why would I listen to that person? Well, also you made a lot of money in the past and you went broke and then you came back to it. And now it's like within this, you're, you're able to, to quickly do things differently and get back on track. Uh, because you fail in one regard doesn't mean you're a failure. And yeah. And that's one thing that I really had to sit within myself was like, why would anybody want to work with me if I've been broke before? Well, because I, I, almost every entrepreneur I know most has had some experience of being in a place where they're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it yeah. financially. Well, and also broke is a fact, just like rich is a fact, but poor on the other hand is a mindset and wealth on the other hand is a mindset. So it's not about your current financial situation right? Because it could easily turn around for any billionaire tomorrow. If they make a few bad bets in a row, which happens, they could go right back to square one. But I'd rather bet on that person at zero or a billion dollars in debt than I would just somebody who's never tried. I and agree. No and I actually, I actually know a billionaire um, or former billionaire. He was a billionaire and he literally lost everything and was sleeping in the back of his suburban until they came and repossessed that. And now he's, now he's in the marijuana industry and he's killing it. Crushing it. But crushing it. Now he's a multimillionaire again. Right. But he didn't let that moment define who he was. And I think that's the, that's the message that I have for people. It's like, I can take people the way that I feel like about myself now is that that was not who I am. That's where I was. It was a circumstance, but that's not who I am. And that's why I knew that was a character defining moment. Because in that moment, I could choose to be poor like I could choose to let that be my story. I could choose to be the person who gets back up. And now when I have clients who come to me and they're in that place where they're fearful of going to that place, like I can speak from a place of experience to really say like, I know what it's like to have that fear and I know what it's like to come back from it. 100%. No, it was on my end. My, uh, my oh. batteries are dying. I was hearing some weird popping, but we figured it out. No hey. hey, this is live podcasting, ladies and gentlemen. We figured live it out. Live podcasting. Right. So, Jessica, I just want to honor you because you're such a great podcast guest. You have your, your story really well thought out. You're here in service. You can tell. And additionally, it's like, I don't really need to prompt you or pull things out of you. It's like, you get on a nice kind of even keel. Like, I love the podcast guests that come on and say, Hey, you know, how do I spin this person up like a top and just let them go? Oh, thank you. And I really appreciate that. Thank you do you an so excellent much. job at it and you, you do it in service too. You don't get all egoic about it. I appreciate that. Um, you've been so generous in sharing so much of your vulnerable edge with us. And thank you for the nod, by the way. I appreciate it. I do strive to be more vulnerable and transparent than I, I think I'm even able to be. And I'm still plunging into the depths of my soul as I go along and learn more things about myself and share them with the world. But um, in that way, like you've been in such high service to us, we want to give back to you as well. 
what are some of the ways in which we can do that? And you know about Make More Marvels, you know about the message. How specifically we'd like to do that is to connect and catalyze the risk, uh, sorry, the resources, the opportunities, the people, and the systems that will help you move your mission forward faster. So what is the way we can do that for you, Jessica? Right now, go. Oh, wow. So, first of all, that's a, such a big thing to receive. So I'm just kind of sitting into the receiving of that. Um, well, I suppose the first thing is that if you feel called to do this kind of work, then I would invite you to, especially if you're a woman entrepreneur, because I pretty much, not exclusively, as you can see, Brad and I work together, but um, most of my work is dedicated towards women. Um, I have a program, it's called Worth to Wealth. And it's my mission to help women in particular own their worth and earn their wealth. Because I believe that women are going to help raise the consciousness of our planet. I believe that we're heading into a feminine era. I believe that women entrepreneurs are pioneering things that have never been done before. And we only have each other to look to for that support. And that if and more me, women- And me. And Brad. And if we have more women who are not only contributing to their highest level, but also creating wealth and redistributing that wealth, I think that's a massively untapped resource that is going to exponentially heal our planet and also um, create more overall resources for our planet. So uh, if you're interested in that work, my invitation to you is to visit my website and check out Worth to Wealth. If you're a woman, I would love to connect with you and serve you. I have a community. It's called Worthy Women that I've been building and growing. It's Oh, it's so beautiful. We just did something called the Yes Games in there this week that has been so fun, calling these women forward into action. So um, join the community and be part of the conversation by choosing to be real about what it's like to be a business owner, choosing to be real about what you're experiencing in your inner world, choosing to be real about <laughs> the good and the bad, owning and claiming not only um, what's not working, but also owning your when you're awesome you know women are afraid a lot of women i know are afraid to just be awesome and own their awesome um so yeah be, come join the conversation there in worthy women um and come and come check out work to wealth and i'm looking for i'm looking for opportunities to spread my message more broadly you know to get in front of a wider audience like like your viewers too so if somebody is has an audience that they feel would be served by hearing this message and wants to learn more about how you can reprogram your mind in order to reprogram and redesign your life, I'd love to speak to your people and help them. And Jessica will find your stuff. She's very yeah. good at it. So if you have something that's holding you back and you're not even sure what it is, have a conversation. I think it's worth doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Jessica, how can people reach out if they like specific links and or um, you know, Facebook or email, whatever, yeah. whatever way you feel most comfortable sharing? Yeah, so you can check me out on my website, www.jessicageist, that's G-E-I-S-T dot com. You can also um, take a look at Worthy Women. Just go to Facebook and look in the groups, Worthy Women. That's a great place if you're a woman to connect with me. And then you can also follow me on Facebook. I have a Jessica Geist or Jess Geist is my business page, or you can try to connect with me as a friend. Although I've been a little discerning about that. You actually helped me with that, Brad. You helped me with that, that post that you wrote about like all the people and wanting to serve everyone. I find myself with that. You know, Too much incoming. Um, yeah. 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 So um, you can follow me on my personal page, but really like my business page is a great way to keep in touch. Um, my website, my groups. Oh, I have another group too called the Coach Academy. I'm doing a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be broke again. I love it. I'm Never gonna be broke again. <laughs> I hear it. I love it. I understand. And thank God, you for I've asking. I've been bouncing around like a pinball myself on the old wealth <laughs> train lately. You know, after I was King Kong and did the hedge fund and did so well, I was like, oh, I'll be good for the rest of my life. Nope, 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 nope. In fact, I was going through uh, the biggest spiral I'd ever gone through. I was just at the top of it. So um, coming back from that spiral and now on my way back up again, and we're gonna hit seven figures next year, uh, yeah. probably about midway uh, at this pace. Um, it was nice. just really exciting to see, you know, going from seven figure earner in a month to thinking I'm the king of the world and, you know, going yeah. back to it. 
is a really fun journey and I feel really good about helping people get there too um, and doing it the way that I do it. So I'm You're just so grateful that. to have you. I'm so grateful to have you and I'm so grateful that we are connected and that you came into my life in the way you did. And I'm so grateful that uh, we continue to make awesome content because every time we get together, it seems like magic happens and this will be no exception. Um, so Jessica, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of everybody in the make more morals community for sharing your wisdom and your gifts and your story and your vulnerability. And, um, I'm going to call this podcast leading with the vulnerable edge and overcoming the unknown with Jessica Geist. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Brad, for having me. Thank you for creating this space and for, you know, producing this content that helps change people's lives. I'm honored to be, to be here with you and with your audience. And I look forward to doing more great stuff together. Let's do it. All right. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Make More Marvels podcast. For more tips, hacks, and strategies to create an amazing, abundant life in your health, wealth, and relationships, whatever that means to you, head on over to makemoremarbles.com. Check out our cool explainer video about what we're about and join our community of entrepreneurial game changers. We want to help you level up your life in every possible way. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and please do leave a review. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next podcast.